A century before Jack the Ripper, another now long forgotten fiend once haunted the streets of London. The monster only cut young, beautiful and fashionable women. With around 50 attacked, some with a signature slash to their lower half. He cut them in their thighs or uh, buttocks. All would recall in horror as this mysterious perpetrator would scuttle back off into the darkness. To make any sense of all of this would have been a task for um, Sherlock Holmes himself. This is the true story of the London monster. 63 St. James's Street, once home to Piero's Bagnio, hotel, tavern, and to some, relatively well-to-do brothel. And it was here on the 19th of January, 1790, where the London monster made one of his first of many attacks. Sisters Anne and Sarah Porter, whose father owned Piro's, were making their way back home from an evening ball when a mysterious man approached and began violently attacking the two young women. The monster's uh, typical modus operandi was to approach his victim from behind. Sometimes he spoke to them with the abusive language or shouted, oh ho, is that you? Like some theatrical villain. And then he cut them in the thighs or uh, buttocks with uh, a sharp uh, rapier. Some of the victims he attacked using a spike protruding from his knee. And uh, other victims were he uh, approached with um, a nosegay of artificial flowers and he invited them to smell at it. And uh, when they did so, he stabbed them in the nose with uh, a sharp object he had hidden inside. Over the course of just a few short months, these signature attacks would intensify. In an effort to rebuff the monster's blade, the ladies of Mayfair would come up with ingenious yet rudimentary ways to protect their derriere. To prevent uh, being cut, well-to-do London ladies purchased cork rumps to uh, attach underneath their skirts or even copper petticoats, but the less wealthy ladies had to make do with a porridge pot instead. With the benefit of modern day psychology, it has been suggested that the monster and the more infamous Jack the Ripper suffered from a rare disorder called picarism. Picarism is a sexual preference to penetrate the skin. So it could be the person's skin or someone else's skin. So with the London monster, it is said that he was penetrating the skin of beautiful women. So that is a form of picarism. Monster mania would soon sweep the city. With the early metropolitan police in over their heads, something had to be done. Businessman John Julius Angerstein believed that he could be the man to stop the crimes and catch the monster. Angerstein invited the monster victims, Miss Porter and other ones, to come to his house where he um, made thorough notes of the monster's assault and he also made notes of what the victims looked like since it was considered that uh, the monster only cut young, beautiful and fashionable women Many women even faked monster attacks to make people believe they were still attractive. And uh, one of his victims, Elizabeth Davis, said that uh, when she was cut uh, by the monster, she uh, thought it was a compliment because uh, she was but a washerwoman. Angerstein soon discovered there was a problem. It is also a possibility that there was more than one monster because to describe a very tall man, some describe a very short man, and his clothing varied from the fashionable attire to the barest of rags. Despite varying victim descriptions of the assailant, Angerstein had wanted posters drawn up with the generous award of £100 for the monster's capture. But this led to more problems. In the hope of securing Angerstein's reward, vigilante action would occur throughout the city, with many Londoners soon turning on each other. Suddenly, every man was both monster and monster hunter, with many false arrests made. To make any sense of all of this conflicting evidence would have been a task for um, Sherlock Holmes himself, and Angerstein was wholly incapable of making any sense of it. Angerstein's hunt for the monster seemed to have come to no avail, until one fine summer's evening in Green Park. In June 1790, Miss Anne Porter, one of the 
original monster victims wanted to take a stroll in Green Park and with her was her boyfriend, the fishmonger John Coleman. And all of a sudden Miss Porter seemed to stagger and almost fall, uh, but Coleman held her up, asked her if she could see the monster. She pointed him out saying, that's him in blue and buff. The man in blue and buff was Welshman Rennick Williams, a former dancer and artificial flower maker. Once apprehended and put on trial at the Old Bailey, Williams would protest his innocence. Many would also have their own doubts that he indeed was the monster. Well, it's hard to say whether Rennick Williams was really the guilty man. One of the arguments in favor of the guilt of Rennick Williams is that as soon as he was put in prison, the monster attacks stopped. However, many of the monster victims, they described men that looked very different from Rennick Williams. Many of the victims actually said he was not the guilty man. Williams would go on to serve six years for the crimes of the London monster, and when released was publicly never seen or heard from ever again. So was it Williams or someone else entirely different? A series of copycat attacks? Or was there ever really a London monster at all? We probably may now never know.